Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Today we will proceed ahead of what we started in our last class. In the last class we talked about Fraunhofer diffraction and therein we calculated the total field at a point of observation due to a line charge distribution. Therein we considered very large number of point oscillators and uh, due to those oscillators, we calculated the resultant field at a point of observation. Today, we will start single slit diffraction okay? and here we will calculate the irradiance pattern on the screen obtained due to single slit. Now to start with, we will consider the same figure which we talked about in the last class and here we again have the, the this line charge distribution or line oscillator distribution and the length of this uh, line oscillator is d and in this length we pick a particular section of length delta y i. This array of oscillator is centered at the origin of the coordinate system where x axis is pointing in this direction, y is pointing vertically up while the z axis is coming out of the plane of the paper. The point of observation is P which is at a distance capital R from the origin and from this section y i, this length element y i, the distance of point of observation P is R i. Now, since we are in the front of a re resign, ah, okay, let me make it very clear that the, the derivation which we did in the last class is a generalized de derivation which is valid for both Fraunhofer and Fresnel because the r term, the small r which is a function of y, there no approximation or no restrictions uh, has been imposed on that. Now we will impose the restriction of Fraunhofer diffraction and what is this uh, restriction? This restriction is that capital R is much much larger than D. It means the point of observation is very far away and the length of this uh, oscillator, the array of oscillator is very small as compared to capital R, the distance between uh, the line oscillator array and the point of observation P. Okay. Under these circumstances, Ry which is appearing in the last expression which we derived in the last class in the denominator of the amplitude as well as in the uh, phase part it never deviates appreciably from its midpoint value r because r which is a function of y is the distance of this oscillator from the point of observation p. But if the length of this uh, point oscillator array is very small as compared to the distance from the point of observation, then small r is almost fixed, it will not vary. Okay? And let us assume the, this fixed value of a small r is equal to capital R which is the distance of point of observation from the midpoint of the line oscillator array. Okay? Now therefore the amplitude which is epsilon L by R will be fixed. Yeah? In, initially in the expression which we derived in the last class it was this but now today under Fraunhofer approximation we will replace it with epsilon r by capital R. This is the transition which we are making in the Fraunhofer domain. Okay, and therefore, this amplitude of the field would be constant and this field is due to the all oscillators in the length element dy. Okay. Now, the expression of this field at point P due to differential segment of source dy is therefore d is equal to epsilon L by R which is the amplitude and this is the phase part sin omega t minus kr and dy also contribute to the amplitude here. These two term is the amplitude and which is written here 
epsilon r by r into dy is the amplitude of the wave. Okay. Now, you notice that the small r which earlier was appearing in the denominator of the amplitude is replaced by capital R, but the small r which is appearing in the phase term here is untouched. We are not touching small r from the phase. Why? Because phase is more sensitive quantity. Okay. With r, with a small r in the phase, we are, we are multiplying k which is 2 pi by lambda. Lambda is a very small quantity which is sitting in the denominator. Therefore, this phase become very sensitive and this is what is written here. Notice that the phase is much more sensitive to variations in r y than is the amplitude. So, that we will have to be more careful about introducing this approximation into it and therefore, we did not replace small r in phase okay, with capital R. Okay, the, this replacement is done only in the amplitude part. Okay. The small r is sitting as it is in the phase part. Since r is function of y, we can expand r y to make it explicit function of y and this expansion would be in this form. How? How can we get this expression? Now, let us go back. Now, you see here that we have a length element and r i is the distance of this length element from the point of observation p or point of observation p is r i distance away from this length element delta y i. But let us go to a generalized case. Suppose we have two point sources, one is s 1, other is s 2 which, which are separated by a distance small a and the point of observation p is sitting here and the distance between s 2 and the point of observation is r 2 while the distance between s 1 and point of observation p is r 1. Now, in this case if we uh, drop a perpendicular from s 2 to uh, s 1 p then this would be the your optical path length difference o p d. Okay. Now, this angle if we draw a horizontal line then this angle will also be equal to angle theta which is angle here. Okay. Now, in triangle S 2 P S 1 we can do the following we will use the uh, very basic trigonometry and we can write that R 2 square is equal to R 1 square plus A square minus 2 A r 1 sin theta okay, very basic trigonometry and this relation can be rewritten as follows. We take r 1 common from the right hand side and then divide it with uh, divided to the left hand side of uh, left hand side yeah like we are uh, taking r 1 common from the right hand side and then the divide bringing it to the denominator of the left hand side and therefore, the relation on the right hand side uh, re reduces to this expression here yeah, plus a by r 1 whole square to the power half. Okay. Now, what we what we will do is that we will expand this in Maclaurin series. Okay. Therefore, Maclaurin series expansion yields r 2 is equal to r 1 minus a sin theta plus a square by twice r 1 cos square theta. Okay, this is what we get, is not now, if you consider the Fraunhofer uh, diffraction in Fraunhofer domain, in Fraunhofer domain what will happen? We have we know that this conditions prevail. Under this condition r 1 minus r 2 would be equal to a sin theta, yeah? this we know. But let us go back to our uh, previous relation, this equation number 22. Uh, now, 
just compare this equation number 22 with this equation derived here, they, they are the same relation. Okay. The 22 is nothing but this relation which we derived. Okay. Now, here we have capital R instead of capital R we are having R 1 A sin theta. Now, a, instead of a sin theta, we have uh, are having y sin theta, a is here replaced with y. Similarly, y square by 2 r is here in the third term, that same thing is here too. And some additional terms are also there, but they would be very small, therefore, we have neglected them. Now, in this expression 22, where theta is measured from the x z plane, and x z plane is this plane z is coming out of the paper and x is in, in the plane of the paper and therefore, x z plane is a plane which is coming out of the plane of the paper and is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Okay. And therefore, this is the, uh, the, the array of uh, line uh, this uh, point oscillators and y is also pointing in this direction and x z plane is a plane which is perpendicular to the length of this point uh, array of point oscillator and all the angles are measured with respect to this horizontal plane. It means angles are measured like this, okay, up and for uh, uh, downward angle it is measured like this. Okay. Every angle is measured with this horizontal plane, which is coming out of the plane of the paper in this figure 11. Okay. Therefore, make it a point that theta is measured from the x z plane and the third term can be ignored as long as it contributes to uh, its contribution to the phase is insignificant. Okay. This term, this term can be neglected. Why? Because we know y which is uh, nothing but it, it represents the extension of uh, this li uh, line oscillator okay. and we know that the d, the total length of this line oscillator is very small as compared to capital R. Therefore, this term can safely be neglected, the third term. Okay. And if you neglect the third term, because the maximum value of y is plus minus d by 2 and which is this and d square is uh, d is much much smaller than r. Therefore, d square would be even more smaller than r and therefore, this third term can be neglected. Here in this case, I have uh, multiplied uh, this third term with a phase and therefore, it gives uh, with a k therefore, this term gives phase. Okay. So, we can see here that this term is very small therefore, we neglect it and this will be true for all values of theta when r is adequately large. The sentence says that when we are in the front of our domain and when the observation screen is very far, then irrespective of the value of the theta, uh, the third term would uh, contribute, uh, it will not contribute anything to the resultant field and therefore, it can safely be neglected. Okay. And therefore, the resultant expression of R which we get is capital R minus y sin theta. Then let us substitute this expression of small r into equation 21 here. Okay. After the substitution, we get this relation. Okay. But apart from substituting uh, the expression of a small r into equation 21 here, we have uh, uh, also integrated it within the limit minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 to have the total field distribution at the point of observation p due to all the small length segments okay. and it is integrated over d y. It means that we are taking into account all the small length segment along the uh, length of the this point oscillator, okay, this array of point oscillator. Now, just to, uh, just, uh, now we will have to just solve this integration to have the final value of the resultant dis, uh, disturbance at the point of observation p or resultant field at the point of observation p. Now, we solve this integration, this is very easy integration and th this will give this expression of the field. Okay. Now, you see that equation number 24 looks very cumbersome, but this term is common both in the numerator and the denominator. Therefore, just to simplify the appearance, let us introduce a new parameter which we name as beta and beta is equal to k d by 2 sin theta. Okay. Once we replace k d by 2 sin theta by beta in equation number 24, we get equation number 26. 
okay now you it's uh, equation number 26 uh, looks a bit simpler now once the field is known we can also calculate their radians okay and we know how to calculate it then uh, this is the expression of the air radiance here we see that this term is gone because it is a phase part and uh, this will contribute to half only and this contribution is looking here and uh, this is the amplitude part which is squared and this is also the amplitude, uh, amplitude part which is sin beta by beta whole square. Now what would be the uh, intensity when theta is equal to 0? Now, when theta is equal to 0, this term which is also called sinc function, yeah, sin theta by theta is also called sinc theta, S i n c and uh, this term which we call sinc function, this is uh, its value is equal to 1 when theta is equal to 0, yeah, because we know beta is equal to k d by 2 sin theta and when theta is equal to 0, we will have 0 by 0 and once you evaluate it then you will get 1. Okay, in this situation i theta would be equal to i 0 which correspond to principal maximum okay, at the axis uh, the, the principal maximum uh, radiance would be equal to i 0. Now the irradiance resulting from an idealized coherent light source in the front of our approximation is therefore given by this expression. Okay where I 0 is this, yeah, this is very much clear from equation number 27 because when you substitute sin square beta by beta square uh, by 1, then what is left is this term and this is your I 0, the irradiance of princ principal maxima, okay. And therefore, the resultant irradiance is given by equation number 29 which is i theta is equal to I 0 sin square beta by beta square, where beta is pi d by lambda sin theta which initially was k d uh, by 2 sin theta and k is, is 2 pi by lambda. Okay. Now, when d is much much larger than lambda, it means we have a array of uh, point sources and whose length is d and if this point sources emit light whose wavelength is much much smaller than d then you see that the irradiance drops extremely rapidly as theta deviates from 0. When d is much much larger than lambda, then this term would be very large, d by lambda would be very large and the sin beta by beta whole square would behave in such a way that as soon as the theta deviates from 0, it drops off rapidly. Okay. And, uh, now, from equation 26, you see this is your equation number 26, which is the expression for the field. The phase part of the line source is equivalent to that of a point source located at the center of the array at a distance r from p. Now, you see here in this phase part, we have omega t minus k r. Okay. This is a constant r, yeah. And what is r? And this uh, r is this distance. Okay. And this is uh, plus d by 2, this is minus d by 2 origin is situated here. It means r is the distance of center point oscillator of this uh, array. Okay. It means in phase term only this center of the array is uh, appearing and therefore, when d is much much larger than lambda, then radiation will predominantly be in theta is equal to 0 direction and emission resembles a circular wave in x z plane. Okay, let me uh, explain it in a bit detail. Now, this is our x direction and this is our z direction, y is pointing up okay. and this is our array of point oscillator and theta is being measured from x z plane, x z plane is this plane. Okay. There are two things which we must uh, keep into account. The first thing that the case which we are considering here is d is much much larger than lambda. Okay. Wavelength is very small as compared to the le length extent of the array. 
Okay, in this case, since wavelength is very small, d by lambda would be very large. Okay. Now, as long as theta is equal to 0, we are having 0 by 0 and we have some appreciable value of intensity, but as soon as we deviate from theta, the sink function will re reduce down to 0, almost 0. Okay. It means, if you plot the intensity here and theta in this direction, in this horizontal direction, then as long as theta is 0, you have appreciable intensity and then it is rapidly decaying down, it is going down to 0. Okay. And also make it a point, theta is being measured from x z plane. Okay. This is our x z plane and we, this is how we are measuring the theta. The only dominant intensity is only appearing when theta is equal to 0, this angle is 0. Okay. It means we have a line charge distribution which is uh, dominantly emitting in this horizontal plane only and as soon as we either go up or down, the intensity quickly goes down to 0. Okay. It means we will see a circular wave front coming out of this array of point oscillators, closely spaced array of point oscillators. Okay. Therefore, what we will see is that around this uh, array of point oscillator, we will see a circular wave front. Okay. And also, if you go to equation number 26, then you see that the phase part, it is, it resembles the, 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 from the phase part, we can just predict that it resembles to a phase which have its origin to a point oscillator which is sitting at the origin, at the center of the uh, array of uh, point oscillator. Okay. It means that the whole array will emit in a circle and the phase behaves in a way that gives us the uh, gives us a feeling that all the emissions are coming from a point source which is at the center of this array and all the emissions are in a form that generates a circular wave front or circular wave okay it means all this point array will only emit in one plane in all direction. Okay. The emission would be confined in one plane which is our z x plane. Okay. I repeat the emission is confined in a in z x plane only. Okay. It is a line charge. Yeah. The line charge is supposed to emit circular wave front, but in a, through our calculation we came to know that in case when d is much much larger than lambda, whole line charge will em emit in a way that gives us the feeling that whole line charge had has reduced down to a point charge and this spacey, spatial point charge is um, um, emitting circular wave. Okay. But conventionally we know that point charge emit a spherical wave front, but no, it is not a spherical wave front, it is a circular wave is being emitted this specialized point charge. Okay. In case when D, capital D is much much larger than lambda. Okay. Okay. Now, let us go to the other extremity where lambda is larger than capital D, where wavelength is very large as compared to the le length extent of the point oscillator array. In this case, what will happen? In this case, let us go back to the expression of beta. Beta is pi d by lambda into sin theta. Now, since lambda is very large, d by capital d by capital d by lambda would be very small okay and if and this will give very small beta and if beta is very small then sin beta would be equal to beta and this and in in this case i theta would be i0 it means the irradiance is then constant for all theta irrespective of the value of theta the irradiance would be equal to i0 
which is a constant. Okay. Now, in this particular case, our line charge will again resemble to a point source, which is again sitting at the center and which is now emitting a spherical wave front. Okay. It is now whole line source will now resemble to a point source which is emitting a spherical wave front now in all directions yeah because i theta is now a constant then irrespective value of the theta irrespective of theta theta is this angle yeah irrespective of theta it will emit the same irradiance and therefore a spherical wave front a spherical waves would be emitted okay therefore we can safely say that in both the cases when lambda is very large or when d is very large, we can any way re replace the line uh, source to a point source. In one extremity when d is much much larger than lambda, a specialized kind of spherical uh, sorry a circular wave will be emitted, while when lambda is much much larger than d, a spherical wave front would be limited, uh, emitted, a spherical wave would be limited, emitted which is very much true also because whenever we say that a point there is a point charge which is emitting a spherical wave and what is a point charge how the point is defined a point is defined as zero dimensional entity it has neither length nor width nor height yeah it's a zero dimensional entity which is much much smaller than any wavelength which we can consider because wavelength has a certain non zero extent its wavelength is always finite, but a point has no dimension, it is a zero dimensional entity. Therefore, the second case correspond to the usual point sources, okay, which usually emit a spherical wave front, which is also coming out to be true through this analysis. While in the other case, when wavelength is very, very small as compared to the length extent of the line source, then in that case, we get some special kind of wave emission, which we name as at circular wave, which remains confined in this horizontal plane, x z plane. And the line source is in this direction, yeah, it is a vertically up and down, yeah, it, it is in vertical direction. Now, we can move to the realistic case of single slit. Okay. Till now, we were considering a line source, which have some uh, fi finite length, but width is 0. But in real uh, situation, in realistic scenario, all single slits have certain width. Okay? The realistic single slit have length as well as some non-zero width. Okay? Now, how to deal with this type of slits? How to mathematically uh, calculate uh, or mathematically model such a system? Now, uh, the realistic single slit, we name it as elongated narrow rectangular hole. Okay, we may name it as elongated narrow rectangular hole. Okay. Now, we will follow the same analysis what we did in the, uh, in the previous uh, slides. Now, how to use that previous analysis? Now, suppose we have this slit. Okay. Now, this slit has now certain width and let us assume it is B okay. and it has certain length and let us assume that it is small l. Now, what we will do is that we will split this slit into a very thin uh, smaller slits. Yeah? Now, we are splitting it into thinner slits and say the thickness of this slit in this individual slit is, is dz. Okay? The large number of smaller slits will appear out of this broad slit. Okay. Now, if we do this, then for each smaller width uh, slit, we can use our previous analysis, previous formulation. Okay. Now, let us see how it is done. The usual procedure to follow in the analysis is to divide the slit into a series of long differential strips yeah how to divide its dz by l okay dz is the width here and l is the length okay we are dividing all uh, this uh, uh, the usual slit into a smaller width 
slit with the same length ok. Now, you, we can take out all these smaller width slit out of this and then analyze all these slits independently ok. Now, each strip is a long coherent line source ok. Since the thickness is very small then we can use our previous analysis ok, because then thickness can now be neglected it is now a line source ok, it, it, it corresponds to a line source. So, therefore, each strip is a long coherent line source and can, can therefore be replaced by point emitter on the z axis here. Now, axes are shown here in this figure, this is our x axis ok, the vertical axis is y axis and z axis is this, it is coming again coming out of the plane of the paper. The slit is in y z plane ok and the wave is propagating in x direction ok, x direction is perpendicular to the plane of the slit ok. Now, you see that you have a source here, it is emitting spherical wave front then we use a lens to make these uh, beams parallel and then they fall on the slit and then they go in different direction due to diffraction and then another lens is used to focus them on a screen and this is the fringe pattern which we usually see. Why do we see this fringe type of fringe pattern? We will see in next few slides. Each such emitter, which emitter? This line strips, this small strips which we uh, have taken out, out of this very uh, wide single slit is that each such emitter radiates a circular wave in x z plane. Why would it radiate circular wave? Because if you remember then when d was much much larger than lambda then this slit behaves, this line source behave as a point which is centered at the center and is emitting a circular wave ok. Okay, and this is the case here, yeah. wavelength is much much smaller than the length of the slit and here in this particular case in the present example d is l, l is the length of the slit ok. Then we are taking a slit of width infinitesimal width d z and length l ok. Therefore, in this case l is much much larger than lambda ok, lambda is very small quantity, the wavelength is very small ok. Therefore, each such emitter or each such a strip will radiate a circular wave in x z plane ok, similar to what we observed in the previous analysis. Now, there are an array of such strips, array of such emitter, then each emitter will emit its own circular wave, is not. Therefore, there will thus be a very little diffraction parallel to the edge of the slit ok. And since we know that the circular wave means every emission is appearing in theta is equal to 0 direction as you move up or down uh, as you increase theta the radiation irradiance drops, drops down very rapidly ok. Therefore, a very little diffraction would appear in a direction which is parallel to the edge of the slit uh, yeah no intensity almost 0 intensity you will observe if you go up or down everything will be confined in the x z plane ok which is perpendicular to the length of the slit ok. The third point the problem has been reduced to that of finding the field in x z plane due to infinite number of point sources extending across the width of the slit along z axis ok. Now, let me uh, explain it here further. Now, this was our initial slit which had width b and length l. Now, we created very huge number of small line sources and each such strip due to point number 1 and point number 2 here can be reduced to a point source ok. Each such strip can now be reduced to a point source and the width of this array of point source would be b, but now it would be length here because each uh, line source can be reduced down to a point source now which is emitting a circular wave ok. Therefore, each strip I am replacing with a point source and each point source is emitting a circular wave. Now, the problem is reduced down 
to a line source which is of length b now and which is in this direction which here yeah which is now in z direction this is the z direction okay and this is now our array of point sources this is our line source now which is now pointing along z axis okay thus we created a array of point sources or line source which is now along z axis and whose length is now small b okay now we then need only to evaluate the integral of the contribution de from each element dz in the fraunhofer approximation okay in the fraunhofer approximation now we will evaluate the the field due to this this horizontal line source okay and what is the formula for irradiance of a line source we have already derived i0 is equal to i theta is equal to i0 sin beta by beta yeah whole square yeah square is missing from this expression okay sin beta by beta whole square but the beta here is different from what we did in our earlier analysis in earlier analysis in beta we were having k d by 2 d was the length of the line source but here the length is now b small b yeah therefore i put it in red and this equation number 30 is the same equation which we derived earlier here okay equation number 29 is the same expression okay but the definition of beta is now changed okay and uh, parameter the b which is the width of uh, width of the uh, uh, single slit is now length of this line array line oscillator array now this theta is also different what is the difference theta is now measured from the x y plane okay earlier the line uh, source was like this and theta was measured from the horizontal plane okay but now since the this line so line uh, source is now in this direction okay therefore theta would be measured from this plane this vertical plane okay this is how the theta would be now measured and this is why it is written theta is measured now from x y plane and if you go to the figure here then you see that now since the line charge is now along z axis and the perpendicular plane here is now x y yeah? x y is the perpendicular plane then the angle would be measured from this perpendicular plane which is your x y plane therefore theta is now measured from x y plane okay make it a point now note that here the line source is short why short because this is the single slit we started with its length was l and width was b and width at the beginning at the very beginning was chosen such that it is very much small as compared to l okay in our previous analysis the line source was of uh, length d which was a bit big because length is always big as compared to width this is the convention but here the length of now the new line source is b only which is very small okay therefore capital d is in the definition of beta is replaced by b now beta is not large because b is very small here okay and although the irradiance falls off rapidly higher order subsidiary maxima will be observable okay as we said the intensity goes down rapidly reduces to 0 as we deviates from theta from theta is equal to 0 but now the length of the array is very small that uh, the intensity will our irradiance will go down to 0 but it will again build up and then again go down to 0 again build up again go down to 0 then how to calculate all this maxima and minima okay we have the expression of irradiance here in equation number 30 okay a very quick answer is to utilize the knowledge of differential calculus okay calculate the first order derivative of irradiance with respect to beta and equate it to zero from there we will get the maxima minima okay let us do this the extrema of i theta occur at values of beta that causes i 
d i by d beta to 0 yeah well known ok let us take the derivative of equation number 30 with respect to beta and this is then uh, this derivation gives this expression. Now, if you equate to 0 then you see two things in the numerator we have multiplication of sin beta with beta cos beta minus sin beta it means either this term would be 0 or this term is 0 ok. Now, the air radiance has minima equal to 0 when sin beta is equal to 0 let us assume that sin beta is equal to 0 yeah when sin beta is equal to 0 then beta will have these values here yeah. for sin beta to 0 beta will may take plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi plus minus 3 pi and so on values ok. It means we will have minimum for these values of beta and we know the expression of beta from there we can calculate the values of theta and once the theta is known we can easily predict the positions of minima in single slit diffraction pattern ok. Now, there is second possibility to the second term second multiplicative term it may also assume uh, 0 value and if let us equate this term with 0 then from here we get tan beta is equal to beta. Now, this is a transcendental equation and which is very difficult to solve ok people usually solve it numerically using bisection method ok and uh, therefore, the solution of this transcendental equation can be determined graphically the solution to this transcendental equation represents the extremum ok. Now, how to solve this equation number 35 on the left hand side we have tan beta on the right hand side we have beta to solve it we plot tan beta and beta separately and the point of intersection would be the solution which will satisfy both left and right hand side ok. Now, the point of intersection of curve f 1 is equal to tan beta with a straight line f 2 is equal to beta are common to both and only one such extremum exists between adjacent minima why. Now, see in this figure figure on the right hand side the f beta the beta is plotted on the horizontal axis and functions of beta are plotted on the vertical axis ok. This f 2 beta is equal to beta is the straight line which is plotted here while the f 1 which is equal to tan beta is plotted here these are the tan beta ok. Now, you see that the straight line is intersecting with this uh, tan beta curve at several points the first is appearing here the second is appearing here ok the third is appearing here and we also know that we have minima at beta is equal to plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi which are here this is the minima this is the minima ok this is the minima and between two adjacent minima we have only one maxima see this is the maxima this is the maxima ok this is the maxima and this is what is said only one such extremum exists between adjacent minima ok maximum is extremum we cannot comment right now what it is ok but the zeros of irradiance occur when beta is equal to m pi this we have calculated here beta is m pi and from here beta is b sin theta m which is m lambda now this, it, this is the same expression which is written in an expanded form where m is this integer ok. And with this if we plot the irradiance here on the vertical axis the relative irradiance is plotted on the horizontal axis both beta and sin theta is here ok it is shown. Now, you see that along theta is equal to 0 we have very huge irradiance and it is drops off very rapidly ok it is falls very rapidly as you increase theta ok. Now, it goes down to 0 at pi 2 pi 3 pi and between adjacent minima we have one maxima between adjacent minima we have one maxima ok. The beta values are mentioned here and sin theta values are mentioned here ok and this is how a single slit diffraction pattern looks like ok a slit which have a certain width ok. Now, suppose you increase the or reduce the width of the slit suppose this is for this slit ok what will happen if you 
reduce down the width of the slit. Okay. In this case what will happen is that your pattern would be broadened, you will get like this. Okay. While for this you will get this. Okay. Smaller is the width of the single slit, wider would be the pattern. Okay. And this is also clear from this figure, this okay. smaller is the B, larger would be the theta. Okay. Now, this is all for single slit, I uh, finish my lecture with this, thank you for listening me.